This is a modern humane cable restraint. It is just vastly better and more humane and more successful than the snares of old. Foxes are such an important predator of so much of our wildlife. They're there at unnaturally high levels because of human activity in so many ways. This means that they can impose intolerable predation pressure on all sorts of species. And if we haven't got a means of controlling them, we can expect a lot of our declining wildlife to get even rarer and in some cases go extinct. The humane cable restraint is uh, a vital conservation tool because it allows us to catch up with foxes in circumstances where no other method would work. Shooting foxes is only possible when you can actually see the fox to shoot it and tall vegetation for example can prevent you from doing that. There's no risk of the fox becoming shy of the cable restraint, it never understands what it's gone into and therefore you can catch it again if it escapes the first time. We've proved this through the science because catching foxes radio tracking them and catching them again and again and again shows that they don't understand what they've been caught in. So humane cable restraints are a far cry from the snares of old. Yes, they're similar in the way that they work, but they've received an awful lot of research time and development to ensure that they actually have a very low welfare impact and they've got huge selectivity advantages over the old types of snare. They're also used globally now and increasingly by wildlife biologists who um, work with wild canid species including coyotes and wolves and we know that when operators use good quality humane cable restraints and they use them with great care that they're relatively benign tools and the animals that you catch are held in good condition. For me, as a wildlife biologist, that's important because I want to let them go and study the animal, but essentially I'm using the same tool as what a gamekeeper would use to catch a fox for control purposes to help protect his ground nesting birds. One of the key most important parts of setting a cable restraint is to make sure that you're setting it somewhere where there isn't going to be any risk of entanglement because it's entanglement that results in poor welfare and injury and so on. So you need an open run that is likely to be used by the animal that you're, you're setting for and you need enough space around it to allow that when the animal is in the restraint it can go round in circles without getting tangled up with anything. Having found that site the next part is to fix your anchor making sure that the anchor itself is not going to be some sort of an entanglement. I tend to use a piece of angle iron and I would drive that into the ground until it's flush with the soil surface so that there's nothing for the cable restraint to wrap around <clears throat> and then I'm going to take the cable restraint itself a copper wire tealer I always use copper wire because it's soft and malleable and won't become an entanglement I use that to support the noose and push that into the ground and center the noose over the run and I'm going to center that around about a hand span high which is just under the chin of a fox when it's going along blissfully unawares just trotting quietly down its run. Cable restraints have to be checked every day that's the legal requirement. The code of practice says preferably before nine o'clock in the morning and as early as you can go but it also says go and do a second check if you possibly can late afternoon early evening. In the UK, the biggest user group of humane cable restraints is going to be gamekeepers and farmers who rely on them at certain times of the year to catch foxes for control purposes. I use exactly the same tool, exactly the same device to catch foxes for research purposes. We're especially interested in the movements of foxes around ground nesting birds and to enable us to do that, I catch foxes and fit them with GPS tags, which has given us a really in-depth knowledge of not only fox densities, but their movement behavior in the context of ground nesting bird conservation. So when I am catching foxes, obviously I want them to be held in good condition because I'm gonna release them again. And we're relying on natural behaviors and actions of those foxes to learn about how they exist around breeding waders. 
So animals which are caught are then fitted with a GPS tag around about two and a half thousand pounds of kit. And so obviously we want these animals to be held in good condition, which they are when you use a humane cable restraint correctly. The collars are pre-programmed so that you send a location fix for that animal every 10 minutes. From that knowledge, we can look at the behaviours and movements, uh, say, around, around breeding waders. So this is a humane cable restraint. It's a very simple device, but it is highly engineered. And each one of the components that you can see um, are down the length of the restraint has a particular role to play. Starting down at the anchor end, the cable restraint has a D-shackle which is attaches it to the ground anchor which can be firmly driven into the ground. Next, there's an extremely strong swivel. Swivels are important because if the cable were to overwind or to wind back the other way, it can cause weakness and the animal that you catch is capable of breaking the wire cable. So this is a critical component. We call it the anchor swivel. Moving further up the wire cable, we have a second middle swivel. The middle swivel is important too because if the ground anchor swivel were to get fouled up with mud or vegetation, this secondary middle swivel takes over. So there's always an operational swivel within the cable restraint. The second component is a small little clip which attaches the cable restraint onto the tealer which supports the wire noose over the run on which you're expecting the fox to travel. What happens when the animal is caught, the clip just lifts off of the wire tealer support, which lays down in the, in the ground. Further along the cable restraint, we have this component, which is called the running eye. This running eye draws the noose up and it is demonstrably free running. It doesn't work on a ratchet type action. It is free running, which makes it fully compliant with UK legislation. The next component that we have is this fixed stop. Its location within the noose is very carefully fixed so that when the noose draws up, it allows smaller non-target animals that you might catch an opportunity to simply pull its head back out. Or for animals that you catch, it prevents strangulation and full tightening of the wire uh, around the animal's neck. The next component, which is really important, is a breakaway device. The breakaway device is in there so that animals which can generate a greater pull than a fox, for example, a badger or a deer, they can break this noose open. These little arms on the breakaway clip, they gradually extend and they reach a certain point and the noose breaks open, leaving the whole noose left behind. But the breakaway device is strong enough to hold the target species that we want to catch. This particular design of humane cable restraint was developed by scientists at the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust and we put it out to a large nationwide field trial involving 34 gamekeepers across the UK and we found that it had many selectivity advantages over the old types of fox snares which keepers were using. So if humane cable restraints were banned, we would be unable to effectively control foxes at critical times of the year when they impose intolerable predation pressure on some of our most precious wildlife. And that in turn means that species that are declining badly already are very much at risk of extinction.